This is Israelite School of UPK. Started out of One West, Harlem, New York, under commanding General Yohanna. This is the 49th annual Passover. Make sure you come and be there with us at the Grand Roosevelt Ballroom, 2nd Hudson Street, Yonkers, New York, 10702. It's a $200 fee, you understand, per family. If anyone has trouble providing the $200, make sure you get with the captain over your city as soon as possible. Remember, it's both an honor and an obligation for all Israelites to attend the Lord's Passover, which is only with the Israelite school of UPK. That's right. If the $200 cannot be made for your family, it will be provided by Commandant General Yohanna. Hotel arrangements have also been provided. If any brother or sister would like to reserve a room, contact the captain over your city immediately. If any brother needs transportation or help with transportation, report to the captain over your city immediately and a charter will be provided round trip. Shalom. All I ever wanted was to be a gangster. Little did I know I was in danger. Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger. Prayed to him all the time, but I was just a stranger. All I ever wanted was to be a gangster. Little did I know I was in danger. Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger. Prayed to him all the time, but I was just a stranger. All I wanted was to be a gangster. And shot call to be known with them niggas letting shots off. Either that or the right hand to the top door. Funny how it's evaded and not the lives lost. Can't be focused on a life that's hopeless. Out there pumping, not knowing the Lord will kill you for that hocus pocus. Used to roll with niggas that cook dope with weaponry. Same ones claim they love you. I had your life in jeopardy. And I know my mother won't success for me. But that G should take a girl straight to ecstasy. Remember running with bruh. Even though we did the wrong thing, my life has been a lot different. Shalom Israel. We are the ISUPK. Started out of One West, 125th Street in Harlem, New York, under Commander General Yohanna. And we are not affiliated with no other Hebrew Israelite group on the planet. And we are located here at 5261 Delmar Boulevard in Suite A in St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. And to call in, if you have any questions or comment, or just want to listen to the class live, you can dial 712-775-7035, access code 744-252. All right? And uh, we're going to go ahead, we're going to jump straight into the topic, okay? And it's the Lord's Passover. And this is, this is going to be a, a series, you understand, that we're going to be doing leading up uh, to the Passover, you know what I mean? And this part here is how how Israel got into Egypt, okay? And like I said, what we're going to do is Passover, the, the one and only official Passover, the Lord's Passover, is going to be in Yonkers, New York. You understand? Uh, uh, March, what's that, uh, 29th or 30th? You understand? Make sure you be in the building. You can check out ISPK.com for all the uh, information and make sure that you are there in the building. You understand me? And like I said, what we're going to do is, and, and, uh, if I y'all give me uh, Genesis 37 and 1, we're going to start there. Okay? Because like I said, what, ha what happened is, the Passover, you said, you, uh, it's like, what you say? You said Genesis chapter, I can't hear you on the wall. Sound muffled. You sound muffled. Okay, so like uh, Genesis 37 and 1. I is that clear? Everybody got their phone on mute? Call with a call, that's better. All right, all right. Most correct. Okay, we're going we're gonna to start there at 1. Genesis chapter 37 and 1. Mm -hmm. And Jacob. Dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger. Uh -huh. In the land of Canaan. Okay. So he was in the land of Canaan, right? Verse 2. So, so like, he was in the land of Canaan. Okay. And he was surrounded by uh, Africans. You understand? The, the Canaanites, they got their name from uh, the city that they were living in. 
they actually took that name and called themselves Canaan, Canaanites. You understand? So they're uh, descendants of, of Ham. So these will be uh, so-called Africans. You understand? Go ahead, keep reading. Verse 2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, mm -hmm. was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bila. Bila, huh? And with the sons of and with the sons of Zippa, mm -hmm. his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Okay. So he turned around. Who who knows who the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah are? Who knows who the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah? Now these were the two handmaids. These were um this was Leah and Rachel's handmaids. Okay. All right. No sweat. I lock you out of all. Uh, go ahead. Was it um? Was it um the other ten tribes? La, not not all ten. <laughs> okay, the sons of Bilha or Naphtali and Dan. Okay, because remember. Remember, Jacob had four wives, right? And he started with uh, Leah and Rachel. And then it went from uh, Leah and Rachel to his two handmaids. I mean, to, to their two handmaids, to her, uh, his wives' two handmaids. Okay, so he had a total of four women. And he had children by all four, right? And uh, Zilpah, she had uh, Asher and Gad. All right? So keep going. Read three. Verse three. Now is now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children mm -hmm. because he was the son of his old age. Okay. And he made him a coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody get that right. Verse four. One, one second, now, like everybody get that. Okay, old man has a, a young son. Then you see. You know what I'm saying? He turned around and he tends to uh, uh, have more love. Not like he don't love his other children, but he turned around. Here he is, an old man, and he had him a young son. You understand? So that, that tends to happen. You know what I mean? So your your, uh, your number one son, once he turned, uh, you know, 18, 21, you had you a little one, two-year-old. You know what I'm saying? Then that love turns around and goes passes on down to that little you understand because you you are uh, older now you understand so keep going he made him a coat of many colors all right let's see what happened with the brothers as a result of him loving his youngest son more than the others three verse verse four and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren they hated him Mm -hmm. And could not speak peaceably unto him. Okay, so they turned around and they hated him even more. You understand? Because they already was, you know what I'm saying, hating on him because, you know, this was his youngest son. He getting all of the attention. You understand? Uh, 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 Israel's throwing throwing the ball back and forth with, with uh, Joseph now more than he has the other children. You understand? So now they turn around they hating him. You understand to where they couldn't even talk to him like he had some sense. You understand? They they never they, they hated him so much for this. You understand? They couldn't even deal with their brother. You understand? And, and even speak to him properly. You understand? Go ahead. Read five. Verse five. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brothers, and they hated him yet the more. Uh huh. Verse 6, and he said unto them, here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. Keep 
Keep reading. Verse 7. For behold, we were binding sheep in the field, and lo, my shelf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about, and made obedience to my sheep. Obesence. All right. Now, who, oh, no, no sweat. Okay, who knows what binding sheaves is? What binding sheaves is is where you take in, you take the stalks of grain and you cut them up. You know, what I'm saying you cut the stalks and you put them, stack them in a pile, and then you tie the the stalks of grain up together. You understand? So you can make it easier to carry. So you turn around instead of. You know, you're trying to, like like in a sense, you know, like a, a grain stalk is almost like a stick. You know what I'm saying? So you got a bunch of little sticks and twigs. Instead of you trying to carry them all in your hands and dropping them along the way, you take them and you put them in a pile, you put all your stalks in a pile, and then you take you some rope and you tie them up. You understand? So that's what that's what they was doing in this in his dream that he had. So his his uh his she his stockpile stood upright. And then his brothers turned around and stood upright as well and made obeisance to his sheep. Now, what is obeisance? Who knows what obeisance is? Shalaki Allah. Go ahead. It means like to pay homage or to bow down to. Right, right, exactly. You understand? To, um, you know, reverence. Like, like the brother said, to bow down to. You know what I'm saying? To pay homage. You know what I'm saying? Adoration. Okay. So they turn around. Now remember, this is the brother that they hate. Okay. Now he's giving them a dream, a vision of where he turned around. They they actually sheave, you know, they uh, uh sheaving in the field, and then he turned around and his sheaves stand up, and then all of their sheaves turn around and pay homage and turn around and reverence in his sheep. All right. Now read eight. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Mm -hmm. Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? Mm -hmm. and, and they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his word. Okay, Salaki. Now, here it is again. Now, this, this is what they said to themselves. They're like, hold up, man. Is he going to reign over us? Like, man, he, he really full of himself. You understand? He already getting all the attention. You understand? He he got the little fly coat. You know what I'm saying? That the old man made him. You know he getting all the old man's love and the old man throwing the ball in the yard with him. You understand? So like I said, they turn around and they really hating him even more now. Okay? Keep reading. Read verse nine for. Tower top. Verse nine. And he dreamed yet another dream. And it told in his brother and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. Mm -hmm. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedient to me. Obeisance. Obeisance. Okay, so here he is with another dream. You understand? And now the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me, uh, to, uh, to him. You understand? To Joseph. Okay, so now check this out. Now read verse ten. Verse ten. And Joseph said, "Behold, I rebuked him." Mm -hmm. And said it to him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brother and thee come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Okay, now Salaka, now pay attention, man. Israel is paying attention to this dream. He he's sitting here now, the brothers, of course, but uh, by them already hating and being mad at them, they like, hold up, man. He's, this dude talking crazy. Now we finna bow down to him and hold up. What's this? So now he turned around and uh, Israel just about figured it out. 
You understand? He like, wait a minute. So, so you mean to tell me that me, your mother, and your brothers, you understand, are going to bow down to you? You see what I'm saying? Now read verse 11. Verse 11. And his brother, and his brethren envied him. Mm -hmm. But his father observed the same. Okay, so his brother, they were they were real jealous. You understand? That made them real jealous. But Israel, he observed the same. You understand? I mean, he was paying attention. You understand? He was like, wait a minute, it, it might be some meaning to this. I ain't just gonna, you know what I'm saying, cancel this out. Right? So he said, this might have some meaning. All right, go ahead, keep reading. Verse 12. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock and Shechem. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here, here am I. Okay, so we basically get that. You understand? So keep reading. Verse 14, and he said to him, go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brother and well with the flocks and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the veil of him, brother, and he came to Shekel. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 16, and a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, what seekest thou? Okay, so like it. So this part right here, now, here's an old head, you understand, found him wandering. He, like, man, this little boy look lost. So he asked him, man, what, you, what are you looking for? You know what I'm saying? What you doing around here? Okay, what seekest thou? You understand? Like, what are you looking for? Because you can tell, you know, you know, if you've ever seen a movie and how somebody's looking for somebody, you know what I mean? They turn around and they're looking all over the place, you know what I mean? Trying to find, you know, who they're looking for. Verse 16, and he said, I seek my brother. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flock. Verse 17, mm -hmm. and the man said, they are departed hence. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. Okay, so the old, the old head was, was quite nosy, wasn't he? You understand? He's like, hey, I, I heard them say that they was finna go to Dothan. You understand? So, like I said, and then Joseph, he turned around and followed them and went to Dothan. And Shechem and Dothan is uh, two two cities in uh, Canaanite, uh, in Canaan, it's like two Canaanite cities. And Shechem is named after the prince um, of, uh, of Canaan to where uh, uh, that's the one that ended up uh, raping our sister, Dinah. You understand? Shechem. And that city was named after him. You understand? And that's where our, our brothers turned around and went and killed all of them. You understand me? For them raping our sister. Okay? But these are two cities in Canaan, in the land of Canaan. All right? One second. New caller? Name it where you call it from? It's Officer of uh, One Yala, uh, Mississippi, Mississippi Camp. Shalom, y'all about your natural record there. All right, where is Shalom? Yeah, how about Shalom? All right, phone on mute for me, y'all. Okay. All right, go ahead, I'll keep reading. Verse 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Mm -hmm. So here they is, before he even got close, you understand, while they seeing him afar off, 
They like, man, we need to just kill this dude. Now remember, they all they already was jealous. You understand? Was hating him because he was his favorite. You understand? Not saying that Israel did not love the rest of his children, but just you understand by him being old, him being an old head and having a son, a young son. He turned around and he just had you know said more favor for that for that young son. All right, and. Th them not knowing and not understanding that, you know what I'm saying, he still love y'all, you know what I mean? So, but they turned around and then after he had those visions, they turned around and hate just grew more and more and more to the point to where they wanted to kill their own brother. You understand? So they like, man, we ought to just kill him right now. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and keep reading. Call the car. Verse 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer coming. Okay, now everybody know how. Verse 20. So, so like, everybody know how when when a brother is standing around and somebody that, uh, you know what I'm saying, nobody likes come up and be like, oh man, heard, heard his cat come. You know what I'm saying? Heard he, he come. This is what they do. You understand? They like, oh man, here come this dreamer. You know what I mean? Because remember, he had them dreams, and in the dreams, the brothers. Was turning around and was paying homage to Joseph. You see what I'm saying? And that pissed him off even more. Okay? So keep going. Verse 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. Mm -hmm. And we will say, Some evil beast has devoured him. Mm hmm. And we shall see what will become of his dream. Okay, so he like, okay, we're going to turn around and we're going to say that some evil beast killed him. A lion came and ate him. A tiger came and ate him. You know what I'm saying? And then we're going to see what becoming him in his damn dream. That's basically what they were saying because remember in the dream, it was them, it was the other 11 brothers giving him homage. You know what I'm saying? And of course, they ain't like that. You understand? And, and they the older brothers. You know what I'm saying? They the older brothers too. So they was like, uh-uh, we ain't having that one. Okay, go ahead, keep reading. How the car? Verse 21. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, let us not kill him. Okay, so now Reuben, this is the firstborn. And he had a little bit of sense. You understand? He like, nah, man. He like, you ain't, you ain't finna kill him. You know what I'm saying? So he delivered them out of their hands because they was really ready to kill their brother. Right? So keep reading. Verse 22. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, mm -hmm. but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, mm -hmm. and lay no hand upon him. Mm -hmm that he may rid him out of their head to deliver him to his father again. Okay, so he was turning around and trying to uh, come up with a plan to where he could make sure, he kind of pleased his brothers for a second because they wanted to do something to him. They wanted to see something happen to him. They wanted to get rid of their brother. So he was like, all right, come on, let, let's just throw him in his pit. You know what I mean? But don't put your hand on, don't beat him up, don't. Don't do nothing to him. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna let him stay in this pit and be stuck. But he was like, you know what I'm saying? His intention was to turn around and bring him back to Israel again. Alright? So keep reading. Call the car, verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was come up to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. Mm-hmm. His coat of many colors that was on him. Okay, so they didn't jack him for his coat. You know what I'm saying? I know I know some brothers that uh, should should know and understand what this is about back when them the starter jackets came out. You know what I'm saying? Brothers were getting jacked for them starter coats left and damn right. The Bulls, the Jazzes, the Lakers, you know what I'm saying? So they turned around, he got once he got close enough to his brothers, they turned around and jacked him for his coat. You know what I'm saying? And that was his coat that his father made. Okay, keep reading. Power of the car. Verse 24. And they took him and cast him into a pit mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 25. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Galilee with their camels bearing spicery mm -hmm. and balm and myrrh. Okay. Going to carry it down to Egypt. Okay, so they came from Gilead, right? A bunch of Ishmaelites. Okay, keep going. Cow and cow. Shalaki Adorah. Go ahead. Okay, verse 26. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Okay, so everybody understand. Verse 27. That. Keep going. Verse 27. Come and let us sell him to the issue, not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Okay, it's like it. Now, here go, here go Judah, right? Judah say, man, what, what profit? Is it for us that we just kill our brother? You understand? And then conceal his blood and hide the fact that we done murdered him. You understand? So now he like, okay, let us sell him. Let's make some money. You understand? That's this is one reason why the Lord called Judah treacherous, man. You understand? Cause look at what we did. It's, even even though we didn't kill him, it's still that was treacherous as hell to sell your brothers to another nation of people. You understand? Ishmaelites, they, and they going to Egypt. And remember, like I said, this is how we ended up getting into Egypt. This is us. This is all leading up to us getting into Egypt and how we got there. All right, and this was a, a plot from the brothers. You understand? On on a poor little old Joseph. You know what we like to say in the world? I ain't even do nothing. Joseph ain't even do nothing. You understand? And then his brothers was hating on him. And then turn around, he had them dreams that made him hate him even more. He had an old fly uh starter coat. You understand? That made him hate him even more. He just hated his guts, man. You understand? And to the point to where they wanted to kill their own brother. But now Judah gets wise and he say, uh, let's not kill him. Let's go on and sell him and get paid. Okay? So now uh they finna sell him to the Ishmaelites. Keep going. Tower to come. Verse 28. Then there, there passed by Midianite merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, mm -hmm. and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. 20 pieces of silver. It's like, you know what I'm saying? They turned around. And sold him for twenty pieces of silver. You understand? That's 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 extremely cheap. You understand? Our brother is worth way more than money. You understand? But this was their evil plot, and it worked. And this is how Joseph first ended up in um, Joseph uh, ended up in uh, Egypt first. You understand? This is how Joseph ended up in Egypt first. And then we're gonna get to the whole story of how Israel ended up into uh, uh, how they, how we all got into Egypt. Okay, keep reading. Tower to come. Verse 29. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. Uh, who knows what that means? Verse 30. Salaki, so, so real quick. Who knows what that means? He rent his clothes. What does that mean? He rent his clothes. Shalaki Adorah. Go ahead. Do it mean he sold his clothes? He, he, do, it mean, do it mean what? Do it mean he sold his clothes? Are oh, you saying sold? Sold, like sell them? Sell, nah, la. Nah, he tore his, 
Go ahead. Does it mean that he tore his clothes up? Kind, that's what it is. Have you ever seen his off his body? Kind. Okay, have you ever seen like on the movies where when somebody, you know, some like older movies where somebody would get mad and they just, like, ah, just going through such agony and just start tripping their clothes off of them? That's what that meant. You know what I'm saying? Because now he, Ruben, his plan was to, to was to uh, act like he was going along with the other brothers, but to turn around and get him out of the pit and take him on back to his dad. You understand? That's what Ruben's plan was. So of course, for Ruben to know that he put him in his pit and then to come back, hell, I've been rent my damn clothes too. You understand? I've been lost my mind too because where is my brother? You understand? So keep reading. Time to come. Verse 30. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not. Mm -hmm. And I, whither shall I go? Okay. Keep going. Time to come. And they took Joseph's, Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. Uh huh. So 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 like it. So what are they doing here? What's taking place here? So like it out of one. Go here. They um. Uh, it looks like they creating a scene. They setting up a um uh, a fake scene. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what they doing. I'm I'm sure you y'all done watched uh, plenty of them uh the more crime shows. You understand when somebody's trying to conceal. Uh, a cover up a crime. You understand? This, this is what they trying to do. They trying to make their story now. So they gotta come up with something. So they take, they kill the little kid goat, and now they dip the coat in the blood. All right, read thirty two. Tower to come. Verse forty eight. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they bowed, and they brought it to their father, and said. This time we, this time we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or not. Okay, so they they sitting there now. They know it is. You understand? Know they know that this is Joseph's coat, but they done played played it off. You understand? Like you said, trying to cover up this crime, trying to create this scene, and they didn't dip the coat in the blood. So they gonna ask him, it, it, uh, "Do you know if this is his coat or not?" You understand? So that's what they say. Okay, keep reading. Come with a car. Verse 33. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat, and evil beast has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. Mm -hmm. So, so, so like, so right here, so he like, man, all this blood on this coat. It ain't no doubt that my son is dead. You understand? Because remember, they dipped the whole coat in blood. You understand? So he like, man, all this blood, it ain't no doubt that an evil beast, an old a lion, you understand? A tiger, you understand? Some, some type of evil beast, okay, that has the capability of ch ch chewing you up. Turn around and he killed him. He dead. You understand? It's no doubt in his mind. You understand? Keep reading. Tower to car. And it also used rent in in a um uh, in a um uh, perspective that you just said. It, like it like they tore piece tore it up. Right, 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 right. Um, it, right. Yeah. yeah, so rent does mean that. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Verse thirty four. And Joseph and Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins mm -hmm. and mourned for his son many days. Okay, so it's like So now Jacob, he just know. You understand? He just know his son is gone. Ain't no coming back. So he is mourning the loss of his son. Right? Keep reading. Call the car. Verse 35. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. Mm -hmm. But he refused to be comforted. And 
And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Okay, so has, has anybody ever seen anybody in their family act like this when somebody that they really, really love uh, end up passing away? You understand? Like they don't, they don't want no comfort. You know, the whole family try to come together. Yeah, the whole family try to come together and try to, you know, talk to you and, oh, it's going to be okay and everything going to be all right. And you know what I'm saying? All of that. And he ain't trying to hear none of that. You understand? He ain't trying to hear none of that. Okay? So go ahead, keep reading. Verse 36. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, uh -huh. and captain of the guard. Mm hmm. Okay, so he turned around. So, so like real, real quick, one second. So he turned around and he got sold officers of the pharaohs. You understand? They took him in and took him straight to the pharaoh and like, hey, I got something for you. You know what I mean? So now, let's skip to uh, chapter thirty-nine. Go to chapter thirty-nine. Verse. Verse 1, chapter 39, verse, verse 1. Top of the car. Genesis, chapter 39, verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites. Mm -hmm. Ishab brought him down thither. Mm -hmm. Thither. So he brought them down there, okay? Thither means like there. You know what I mean? Okay, read verse 2. Call the car. Verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. Mm -hmm. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Okay, so the Lord was with Joseph. You understand? And in a minute, I'm going to pull that precept about those uh, dreams that Joseph had, you know what I'm saying, to show you uh, what those those dreams had meant. You understand? Now, the Lord said, as a matter of fact, we're just going to pull it now. The, uh, Lord, uh, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was prosperous. He was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Okay? So he was in the Pharaoh's house. You understand? Now, skip to, skip to, uh, now, nah, you know, we'll just hold it, we'll just hold it. Go ahead, keep reading, read three. Keep reading. Come with a cup. Verse three. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to fight for in his hand. So, so you get that, right? <laughs> you understand that? The Lord was with Joseph, and the, the heathens, they can see it. You understand? When the Lord is with us, they can see it. And guess what else they can see? They can see when the Lord is not with us. All right? So, keep reading. Call the car. Verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. Mm -hmm. So you understand that. Okay, so he found grace in, in the sight of Pharaoh. So he served the Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh made him overseer of everything in his house. Okay, and everything that he had, he put it in Joseph's hands. Okay, keep reading. Verse 5. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. Wait a minute, for the Egyptian sake? And the blessing of the Lord. Salaki, so, so for the Egyptian sake? La for Joseph's sake. For Joseph's sake. You understand? The, the Lord, he ain't with these other nations of people, man. It ain't nowhere in the Bible 
where he was just blessing the heathen soldiers for no apparent reason. You understand? He turned around and blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Why? To take care of Joseph, to make sure Joseph was straight. Because that was, a, that was a, a horrendous ordeal that Joseph just went through. And who, who knows how old Joseph was when this happened to him? Who, who remember how old he was when this happened? When he got sold to them, to the, uh, to the Ishmaelites. Shalom, I don't know what you said. Could you repeat that? No sweat. I was saying, who knows how old Joseph was when he got sold by his brothers to the Ishmaelites? Cow to cow. He was 17, wasn't he? Absolutely. You understand? He was 17 years old. I mean, you know, this is this is a heavy ordeal for a 17 year old to deal with, to be thrown into a pit, to be left down there by you know by his brothers. You understand? His brothers are snatching, jacked him for his his uh his bull starter jacket. You know what I'm saying? Got thrown in a pit and then got sold to some strangers. You understand? So this was a, a, a horrendous ordeal for a 17 year old to be going through. You understand? So the Lord turned around and he blessed that Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. You understand? Keep reading. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Mm -hmm. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house uh -huh. and in the field. Okay, so we understand that. All right, continue reading. Verse 6. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, mm -hmm. save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly man, and Joseph was a goodly person, uh -huh. and well favored. Okay, so he turned around to Pharaoh, he didn't even know what he had. He had so much, he didn't even know, because, of, like I said again, because of Joseph. Because he put everything in Joseph's hand. It's kind of like uh, when a person owns a business and then he hires an accountant, you understand, bookkeeper and all of that. Half the time, they don't even know how much money they got coming in, how much money they got going out, or anything else that they got. Because why? Because they leave it into their accountant's hand, you understand, into their, their bookkeeper hand, you know what I'm saying? And all they do is just sit, they own it whatever business it is, and the person that's over everything is responsible for keeping track with everything. That's like, that's in a sense like what Joseph was. You understand? To the point to where the Pharaoh, he didn't even know what he had. You understand? Keep reading. Tower to Verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said lie with me mm, look, look at this look at this African man you understand look, uh -huh. at, look at these look at these Hamites you understand disgusted as hell saw Joseph saw he was the man look she, she married to the Pharaoh you understand what I'm saying this to a damn Pharaoh white a damn whore man you understand but here it is she see that the Lord with Joseph too. But he refused uh -huh. and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanted not what is with me in the house. Mm -hmm. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. So he like, man, look, he didn't he didn't hand me every damn thing. You understand what I'm saying? So he breaking this down to her like, look, okay, he, he's explaining to him how and why he's refusing to turn around and have sex with her. Okay, keep reading. Call with a Verse 9. Wait, yeah, verse 9. Go. There is none greater in this house than I. Mm. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. Mm -hmm. Because thou art his wife. 
Mm-hmm. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Sin against Pharaoh? Against God. Sin against the most high, man. You understand? Now this, this Joseph had some goddamn sins, boy. And check, check this this trick. He checked this trick. You understand? If Pharaoh's wife was a whore, I'm pretty sure she's sleeping with a whole bunch of damn people. You understand? And the Pharaoh don't know about. It. Okay? So he checked her and said, Look, there is none greater in this house than I, not even you. You understand what I'm saying? And he said, He kept back, he, he didn't, he hadn't kept back anything from me but thee. He let her know that, Look, you his wife, he the only thing that, you the only thing that's off limits. You understand? So he he reminded her that look, you belong to him, man. You his wife. You are the only thing that this man has kept back from you. Everything else he done put in my hands. You understand? And he said so. So then now you think I'm going to turn around and do this great wickedness and sin against the Most High? Not even. All right. And, and this right here uh, is a is a scripture to show you that uh, like a lot of people they think. That the uh, that the laws, the commandments was only passed down uh, when Moses. You understand? But guess what? This stuff was passed down from Adam to Noah to Abraham, Isaac. You understand? Jacob, and he taught it to his sons. You understand? So, right. so they knew they knew better than to sleep with another man's wife. You understand? And this right here proves that he knew. That it was a sin to sleep with another man's wife. Alright? And and Joseph, he checked that trick. You know what I'm saying? That old Egyptian, that old Hamite trick. You understand? That's why. Keep reading. Verse 10. And it came to pass as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he hearkened unto her to lie by her. Or to be with her. Salakia. Okay, now her her this her this 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 old Hamite trick is begging begging him for the rock. Okay, so so day by day she steady begging him, come on, come on, please, 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 please be with me. Me love you. You understand? Me want you. And he was like, Nope. <laughs> you understand? He turned that trick down every day. Nope. Nope, can't do it. You understand? Keep going. Verse 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. Uh huh. And there was none of the men of the house there within. Mm hmm. Keep reading. Verse 12. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and hid it. Or, I mean, fled and fled and got out of him. Okay. And got him out. Okay, stop right there. So, here she go. Now, he doing his bit. He's conducting business as usual, right? Because, like I said, remember, he's handling everything for the Pharaoh. All right? So, she turned around and caught him by his garment. Snuck up on the man, you understand? Grabbed him by his garment, like, come on, give it to me, please, now. Take me. Nobody's here. Nobody's around. <laughs> Have you ever seen that on, on a movie? You know what I'm saying? World nasty, desperate white woman would do that to somebody. You understand? Walk up on a brother, and then her, I've, I've always wanted you. You understand? I've always loved you, and all of this. So he turned around, he, hey, he shook up by his damn garment. You understand? And burnt clean out. You understand? Uh, hey, hey, let, let this be a lesson to you African women. No means no, damn it. You understand? Ain't no Israelite finna give you nothing. You understand? Because it don't belong. It ain't for you. You understand? So like I said, this she did the uh, Harvey Weinstein on, on the brother, man. Trying to take it, man. You understand? With already sexually harassing the brother every damn day and then now she gonna try to take it from the man joseph was so slick and so smooth he shook up out his damn garment man and burned clean out 
You understand? Burn clean out on her, man. You understand? And let that be a lesson to brothers, man. Don't be so goddamn weak. You understand? Have some strength, man, to, to, to resist something that you should not be having, man. This, this would have been a lust. You understand? Because this is a woman that you cannot have. You understand? Number one, she's a heathen. And number two, she belongs to somebody else. You understand? So learn to have some strength and some integrity, man. You understand? All right. So keep going. Verse 13. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and it was fled forth. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. That she called unto the men of, the, of her house mm -hmm. and spoke unto them, saying, See, he has brought in and he will unto us to mock us. Mm -hmm. He came in unto me to lay with me. And I cried with a loud voice. Now, now Salakia, okay, now, how, how many times has this happened to innocent black men, man? You understand? Hispanic men, native Indian men, to where you got a heathen, you understand, that you don't even want to deal with, and they turn around and scream that rape and say that you didn't rape them. You understand? This is this is why oh, we need to separate from the other nations of people, man. You understand? This is why we don't need to be nowhere around these people. Because they don't mean us no good. You understand? Now, women can't handle rejection. You understand? And obviously, heathen women really can't handle rejection. You understand? So he turned around, look, he he shook, he shook about the damn garment so fast to where she didn't even know that he was going out like the damn thing. You understand? And the scripture said it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand. Look, the damn garment was still standing up and Joseph was gone. You understand? <laughs> Joseph was gone, man. You understand? So then she turned around and lied. Ain't nobody heard her screaming and yelling. Ain't nobody heard nothing, man. You understand? And then she made up this damn story talking about Joseph came in unto her and he done raped her. You understand what I'm saying? And I cried with a loud voice. Please. You understand? Joseph turned that trick down and she couldn't handle it. Joseph was rejecting her day by day. And then this was the ultimate. That's right. This was the ultimate rejection right here. She could not take it no more. So she plotted against him. You understand? Keep reading. Power to come. Verse 15. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled uh -huh. and got him out. Okay. Keep going. Verse 16, and, he, and she said, and she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came on. Okay, so he turned around and she holding on to, matter of fact, this happened in uh, the White House. You understand? To uh, Bill Clinton. You understand? That damn dress that he skeeted on, that, that hoe kept that dress. You understand? This is what she does. She turns, she can hold on to the garment. You understand? Verse 16, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And she spoke unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. Uh -huh. Keep reading. Verse 18. And it came to pass. As I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spoke unto him, saying, After this manner did, did, did thy servant to me, that his wrath okay stop right there now when you go back to 17 she said the hebrew servant man you understand know that guess what 
Hebrews and Africans and Hamites, you understand, Egyptians are not the same people. They know that we're not the same people. They knew it back then, and guess what? They still know it today. You see what I'm saying? That's right. So why, why is it so hard for blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians to know that we is not no damn Africans? You understand? We are That's not right. Africans, man. We're not Hamites. We're not the same people. And she knew that. And she turned around and lied made up a whole damn story. It's bad enough that the brother that got sold uh, to him, you understand? And it's not with his family. But then now, this whore wants to sleep with him, and he refuses because he has integrity, because he keeps the commandments, because he actually served the Most High, and this whore is mad about it. You understand? So now she done made up a whole damn story and lied on this man, claiming that he done tried to take take that, that, old, that old dirty monkey of hers. You understand? Keep reading, Doc. Call the car. Verse 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. Uh -huh. And he was there in the prison. Okay, so he turned around and put Joseph in prison, man, behind him sleeping, or him thinking that he slept with his wife. The scripture said after he heard his wife, you understand, then he turned around and his, his wrath was kindled against Joseph. You understand? So he was hella mad, angry. You know what I mean? To the point to where he took Joseph and put him in prison. You understand? And and, and this is why uh, this is why we need to, like I said, separate from these other nations of people, man. Because they still doing the same stuff right now today. I know a bunch of brothers, man, that turned around and was messing with them white girls, messing with them heathens, man, and got cases behind. Them. You understand? I know a brother that just got out of prison. Uh, this was a couple years ago. The man had did 35 years in prison for him uh, allegedly raping a white woman. And he did not even do it. The man did not touch this woman at all. You understand? And once the, uh, now when, when the crime was committed, when he was accused of the crime, they, uh, they didn't have DNA and all that special stuff uh, that they use now. But then once they, uh, because he he, uh, he maintained his innocence. And that's another thing, man, I'm sideboring real quick. If, if you did not commit a crime, do not say that you did just to try to hurry up and get out of trouble. Because that's what has happened to a lot of our brothers and sisters, man, is that they turn around and they just want to get out of trouble so quick. The white man is the goddamn devil the Bible speaks of. He's standing over them, lying to him, telling him, look, if you say you did it, then we'll go easy on you. But if you don't, then we're going to go home. We're going to throw the book at you. You know what I mean? And so a lot of our brothers ended up uh, admitting to some crimes that they haven't even committed, man. And sitting in prison, they can't even damn get out. But this brother here had maintained his innocence and said, I did not rape this woman. You understand? I'm standing on that. It was five years he was in prison. They kept asking him. Ten years, 15 years, 20 years. The man kept saying the same thing, kept telling the same story until once the uh, DNA came out, they ended up, uh, these new lawyers that was trying to make a name for themselves, uh, uh, took it upon themselves, picked up his case, out that, that white whore lied, and he wasn't even the damn man that raped him. You understand? Her boyfriend that she was with had took her money. He was taking her money. You understand? And uh, beating her up because she was she was getting tired of him taking the money. And at this particular time, she didn't want to give the money up. So he turned around, beat her up, and took the money and took the box. And then when she got so scared because she didn't have no money, she couldn't pay her bill. So she lied and said that a damn black man raped her, man. You understand? And this brother turned around. Right. She pointed him out and said, he's the one that did it. And this whole knew she was lying, man. You understand? And this is why we should not be nowhere near the, uh, the other nations of people, man. White on down to Africans, all of them. You understand? Because all of them would do the same thing. And they're still doing it right now today. You understand? This brother ended up That's in right. prison 
lost his entire damn life for real, man. The man was like 20, uh, I think it was about 20, 21 when he got locked up. You understand? And set in jail for a crime that he did not commit for uh, 35 years. You understand? And now our brother Joseph, he's sitting in prison for a crime that he did not commit. You understand? Keep reading. Tower of the Tower, verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph uh -huh. and showed Joseph and showed him mercy. Uh -huh. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Okay, so you understand that. Keep reading. Verse 22. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. Uh -huh. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Okay, so you understand that. Keep going. Jo Joseph, it's like real quick. Joseph, Verse 23. It's like real quick. Joseph is in prison, running the damn prison. You understand? Joseph, is not, he done went from Pharaoh's house to running all of Egypt to now he's in, I mean, uh, like uh, Pharaoh's house. He was uh, running Pharaoh's house in his business. Now he turned around and he in jail running the prison, man. You understand why? Because the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. It means to show him mercy. Keep reading. Tower to Verse 23. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, mm -hmm. because the Lord was with him. Mm -hmm. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Come on now. Jo Joseph sitting in prison with, with tons of money on his damn books. You understand what I'm saying? He's prospering in prison, man. Joseph, he prospered in prison to where he could just go straight to the store. You know what I'm saying? Whenever he felt like it and get the things that he, he prospered in prison, man. You understand why? Because the Lord was with him, man. You understand? And we're going to go ahead. And, do we have any questions on the topic or, or, or even off the topic? We're going to go ahead and end the class right there. This is part one of the uh, of the Passover circle. Like I said, man, the Passover is a damn glorious high holy day that's coming up. You understand? And all of Israel should be in the building, man. You understand? In Yonkers, New York, in the ISPK, the official Lord's Passover. It's only one. You understand? I, I know these other Israelite groups like to have uh, 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 revival Passovers and all that old nonsense like them Christian churches is doing. But it's only one Passover, man. You understand? And like I said, we get into... We getting down to the history of how we ended up in Egypt in the first place. You understand? And it was because of our brothers being so cruel to poor old Joseph. Poor little old Joseph. You understand? He ain't even do nothing. Turned around, sold him to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites sold him to the damn Pharaoh. You understand? To his officer. And then now, Joseph is sitting in the Pharaoh's house you know, because the Lord was with him. And the Pharaoh could see that. And then he turned around and said, okay, the Lord is with you. So guess what? I can have it going on because of you. So he put Joseph in charge of everything. And then Joseph was the man, of course. And then his the Pharaoh's uh, old slut wife was trying to have sex with Joseph. Joseph refused every single day. She kept trying, begging and pleading, crawling on her knees, asking that Hebrew warrior, for some of that and he refused and she turned around and lied on him and got him thrown in prison but guess what the lord was still with joseph he had mercy on him and he turned around and made him prosper in prison to where he was running the entire prison joseph was running the jail you understand to the point to where the officer that was in charge of the jail didn't have to worry about nothing that he put in joseph's hand because he knew that Joseph was going to handle business. Why? Because the scripture says Joseph was a goodly person, man. You understand? And well favored. Joseph wasn't about that. You understand? Joseph wasn't about getting over on nobody. Even though he was a damn heathen. You understand? All I ever wanted was to be a gangster. Little did I know I was in danger. Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger. Prayed to him all the time, but I was just a stranger.
Yes.